Hello and welcome into my attic. So today I have three trash to treasures to show you um, and here we go with the first. Hope you enjoy. So I picked up this really cool tray from the flea market and it has the map of Florida on it and I have give it a good wash and I'm gonna give it a good clean, extra clean with some window cleaner. With super glue, I am going to stick on some wooden beads for some feet. So I'm going to paint the tray black. I'm using black acrylic paint with a little cornstarch, a little wood glue, a little water, all mixed together into a creamy paste. I did two coats of that, drying in between. So as you can see, I have an old tray here, all the way from Florida, and I really do think it's from America, even though there's nothing else written on the back or anything, because I've seen um, an American DIYer um, on YouTube that had quite a few of these trays. I don't know what she did with them, she didn't show, but yeah, she had a few of them, and I know she's from San Francisco, from California, so, um, yeah, so I'm imagining that this that I picked up from the flea market is also from America, which is really good. Uh, it's a really nice detailed map of Florida, but, you know, it's a bit old now and it needs a facelift. So here we go. When the tray was completely dry, I sealed everything with some clear wax. I'm going to decorate this tray with some clay moulds and I'm going to make the clay myself um, and I'll put the ingredients here at the top. Now I think I made about four batches of this um, clay because you know it's just easier to manage if you do a little at a time. So I made one batch and then I used it all up, then I made another batch, then I used that all up. You know, it doesn't take a minute to make, so that's not a problem. Rather than it drying out or having lots of it around, maybe I don't need it all. So I just did a little bit at a time and it worked out better for me that way. So once my clay was ready, I sprinkled it with some cornstarch and proceeded to make my clay form. To stick down my clay decoration, I'm just using my wood glue.
I put a big clay form in the middle and I proceeded to put smaller clay forms all the way around the big clay form but I do wish I did about four to five of the big clay forms because I would have finished much more quickly in that way because it did take me quite a while to do all these small forms and stick them all on but I suppose it was worth it in the end because you know you just do get a bigger variation of decoration and design So now this is complete at last <laughs> I am going to put it aside and let it dry out for a couple of days because it's very damp here at the moment so you know if it was really dry and sunny it would be it would dry up much quicker but you know the weather is what it is so I'm going to have to wait a couple of days so that I can proceed to decorate this tray okay so a couple of days have passed now and there has been some shrinkage there has been some cracking but i expected that um you know when you glue on clay like this onto a surface and it dries it, it shrinks and cracks and that is that's fine i embrace that because you know it gives me a more authentic vintage old look so that's that's no problem at all but there are some gaps and I do want to fill in these gaps, make it as full as I possibly can. So I'm just going to roll up a couple of clay beads, um, make a little pattern on them. Um, you know, anything that comes to my mind really, um, just to fill in the gaps. Okay, so it's the next day and the uh, small clay beads that I added are adequately dry. They're not completely dry, but they're adequately dry for me to um, go on with my painting of the clay. And it's just a black wash really with acrylic paint and water. Uh, not too thin, not too thick, just the right consistency. And when I've painted all of it, I'm going to wipe away with a wet wipe until I'm satisfied with the look I've got.
well guys let me say this is looks really high end and it's amazing what you can make with a couple of ingredients from the kitchen and an old flea market tray uh, it's it's got a new life and i love it i think it's really gorgeous So I'm going to use this product here to seal the clay, um, it's a matte sealer, it's very very matte, it is so matte that it almost feels like rubber when it dries, um, so yes I'm going to proceed with that now. So when this sealer is completely dried I am going to proceed to add my decoration and show you the reveal. So for my second DIY you may have noticed these pretty jars on my tray. Well I'd like to show you how and why I decorated them for this tray. So the jars I find the cutest are the shorter wider jars and if they are smelly which these aren't actually but if they are what I normally do is I put some a really strong perfume detergent inside them for a few days with the lid on and eventually the jar will take the smell of the perfume rather than of I don't know whatever was in the jar like pickles or something. So first of all I washed and dried them. On a piece of photocopy paper I applied a light coffee wash. When the coffee wash was dry I stamped on some labels. I could have just printed them out on the printer and then added the coffee wash but either way is fine. When I glued the labels to the jars I tried to use as little glue as possible. I used wood glue because I didn't want to risk smudging the glue onto the glass. So the most unsightly thing about using glass jars for DIYing is the screw on ridges at the top of the jar. They need to be disguised but it's not very easy to disguise them. So I took out my fateful old plastic chain and I noticed that it covers up the ridges really well so I measured out the length that I needed and proceeded to paint the chain. I wanted to paint the chain black to go with the tray so um, I used black nail polish. If you don't have black nail polish you could use a, a black permanent marker. I didn't want it to be solid black so I took a wet wipe and just dabbed the polish off of the chain like here and there. Then I proceeded to hot glue the chain onto the jar. I started on, from the middle of the chain on the front of the jar so that my two ends of the chain will meet up at the back and actually this didn't meet up very well. It overlapped a little bit but it was just a little bit and it didn't really notice. So when the jars were finished I took some fabric flowers and arranged them on the inside to my liking. Then I took them out and just gave them a really good spray with my potent perfume. So as well as being pretty they emanate fragrance as well. 
Yes, yeah, so I'll definitely have to spray them every day to have perfume coming from them. But, you know, that's not too much of a hassle. Uh, it's a small price to pay. As I like these so much, I thought I'd like to make one for each room. Um, so I did do that and I'll show you them, the ones that I made. Um, also, I chose a different way to add perfume to them and I'll show you how I did that as well. So this time I used jam jars and I hot glued twine around the top of the jars. And on other jars I hot glued on this thick jute tape. So in one jar I added mixed coloured stones and in the other jar I added white stones but obviously you know you can add anything you want and you'll see that I've added other things as well. So I took my fragrance oil diffuser and I thought I'd put a few drops of that onto the stones but then I remembered that I've got some perfume for the washing machine. It's not soap and it's not softener. It is just perfume for the washing machine. And it has got a gorgeous smell of fresh, clean linen. And it's a, a potent smell, but really gorgeous. So I just added a few drops of that in it. Obviously, in time, this liquid will um, evaporate, will dry up. But, you know, if I put it in every few days, each time I put it in, the smell is going to stay on the stones and get stronger and stronger. At least <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. It's, I'm going to try it out anyway. It's an experiment. Anyway, guys, here is the others that I did. This plastic watering can is very smooth and shiny so I'm going to have to roughen it up with some sandpaper because I want to paint it. As you can see it isn't shiny anymore so it's ready to paint now. So after wiping over the watering can again um, I prepared my paint and here's the recipe. It's a really good paint and sticks really well to plastic. I want this bottom layer of paint to be gritty, that's why I've added the bicarbonate soda. So I did two coats of this black paint and I dried the paint in between coats. So now the black paint's completely dry, I'm going to paint over it with this lovely green paint. So I made up this lovely green paint. Um, I did it in the same way as before, but I didn't add the bicarbonate soda because I don't want this gritty. I just want it smoother. So I did one coat of the green paint and now it's completely dry. And I'm going to sand it off and hopefully some of the black gritty paint will show through. Now this paint is really tough to come off so you know it sticks really well but anyway I went a bit heavy handed here with the sanding and the white is showing through so I'm just going to go over it quickly with this green paint. So the watering can is looking a bit too clean uh, so I'm going to go over it with a black wash which I made with acrylic paint and water. Adding some dark shadows here. As 
Okay, so now it's looking dirtier and it's dry. Um, I'm going to add an image for some decoration. So I took my measurements. And cut out the piece of image that I was interested in. I want to frame the image uh, to give it a cleaner look. Uh, so I'm just using kind of like cereal box and I'm gonna cut out a frame for this image. If you ever do this, make sure your knife is really sharp to get a clean cut. I want to thinen out this frame because it's a little bit too thick. So I'm just going to peel off the paper at the back. So I'm going to paint the frame now, I'm going to give it a couple of coats and I'm going to dab it because I want some texture and when it dries I'm going to go over it with the black wash so it matches up with the watering can. I just glued everything down with white glue. So here in the corners of the image, I'm just going to add some dark shadowing with my black wash. And here's the reveal. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, hope it can inspire you, thanks again, bye.